And one of those uh, who was my friend and comrade at the time was a man named Peter Leinabau, uh, who has a book called The Incomplete, True, Authentic, and Wonderful History of May Day. I recommend this book to everybody here. Uh, Peter is a historian, and this morning in Paris, he gave the keynote address to a global 1968 conference, which is attracting people from obviously France and elsewhere uh, to commemorate and learn <coughs> from that event, or those events that were going on. So uh, <coughs> it's important to realize that we're in what Mao Zedong called the protracted war. It won't be easy, it won't be short, but we need to enlist for the duration. Uh, Peter Leinabaugh is somebody who enlisted for the generation is really one of the great American historians of our times. <clears throat> well, rather than give a long speech about the whole history and origin of uh, May Day <clears throat> and the Haymarket Massacre in Chicago in 1886, I'd like to talk a little bit about the history of the IWW in Kansas City. <clears throat> Uh, the IWW was founded in Chicago in 1905, uh, and Big Bill Haywood opened it by picking up a slat off the floor. He didn't have a mallet or a hammer. And he took this mallet and he patted it on the lecture and he said, this is the Continental Congress of the Working Class. Well, the IWW came to Kansas City very early on. And in 1911, there was a series of free speech fights across the United States. And the IWW were always being arrested for speaking on the street corners, even though it was clearly constitutionally protected speech. This happened in Kansas City in 1911 in the fall at the corner of Missouri and Maine in the River Market area. Uh, if you want to commune with the uh, spirits of the IWW go down there to that corner sometime. Anyway, the way that the IWW combated this repression was to <coughs> uh, put out a call across the country for IWW members to come to wherever the fight was going on. And soon scores, sometimes hundreds, would show up and they would be arrested and they were packing the prison here. And they were, there were too many to feed. They realized it was just an impossible situation. So eventually they were uh, freed. And these, these fights were going on all across the country. Uh, similarly, Kansas City was the headquarters of the Agricultural Workers Organization, section of the IWW that concentrated on organizing migrant workers who worked the wheat harvest in the middle of the United States. So they had a school every winter after harvest. They would uh, meet up here in Kansas City and have classes and so on and learn the history of their fight. Uh, similarly, uh, during World War I, the IWW fell under sharp repression in Wichita and El Dorado, Kansas, uh, the uh, police uh, uh, arrested the IWW, trashed their hall, and kept them in jail without trial for two years. Uh, finally, the trial occurred in Kansas City, Kansas, in December of 1919. Many were convicted and sent to Leavenworth. And at that time, there were sort of suburban trains that all crossed the metro area. So they took the train up to Leavenworth uh, to surrender, singing all the way. Uh, so the IWW was always a singing organization, which more in a moment. I did want to mention that uh, 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 Fred Lee, uh, who some of you met and knew, uh, was a professor of economics at UMKC. Uh, he is now deceased. But he founded, refounded, let's say, the branch of the IWW in Kansas City. I actually met Fred in England in 1995. 
and it's kind of a long story, but he ended up in Kansas City. Uh, and he was general secretary, I believe, of the IWW, a very important person in the organization. Uh, <clears throat> well, I, I, I would want to just say a little bit about the Quindaro his, uh, historic site. How many of you read or seen on television what's happened over there recently? One or two people? Okay, I should just say something about it, because on May or on March 18th, I was giving a couple of librarians a tour of KCK and found that the statue of John Brown there had been uh, defaced with racist and sexist uh, graffiti. Uh, this was widely reported in the newspapers and on television. Uh, this prompted a rally at the site uh, on April the 4th, uh, uh, which the mayor of Kansas City, Kansas spoke, and uh, the police officer who had removed the graffiti was there, along with numbers of other policemen. I think they were very glad to be present at a, at a positive event rather than beating someone's head. Uh, it's, it's well to remember that sometimes you can find allies among the police. I won't try to tell the whole story. Brianna doesn't agree. But. <laughs> well, that's one of those things that we yes. we debate and we discuss and we try to figure out. Uh, in any event, in, in 1982, there was a plan announced to put a large landfill in Kansas City, Kansas at the site of the old town of Quindaro, which had been a station on the Underground Railroad before the Civil War. This prompted a fight that lasted up until the present. Uh, and I'm not going to try to tell the whole story here, but I did want to mention a couple of things. Uh, there was a group of people in the community who filed a lawsuit against the landfill. I advised them this was a good idea, but it, probably the courts were going to find against them, which they did. It went all the way to the Kansas Supreme Court, and they lost. And I said, that is not the end. So uh, we, we've started an organization, and we continue to struggle against the landfill, which lasted for, for 35 years, uh, in which I was personally involved in some of that. It was wonderful to experience the solidarity that came forth from the community. Uh, and it was, it, well, it's a very emotional thing to remember uh, how we stuck together. Uh, when the city thought that they were going to go ahead with the landfill, we had educated the community, not just in Quindale, but across the metro and hundreds of people started showing up. And we put out the word that we would sit down in front of the bulldozers and the city of Kansas City, Kansas surrendered. Uh, they did not want to have this kind of war that would have ensued uh, in Northeast Kansas City, Kansas. So the point is, don't give up just because the courts find against you. Continue and you will prevail. I want to close by just saying, by reading part of a poem, the Wobblies were great songwriters and singers and poets. And one of their poems that I've always loved is called The Commonwealth of Toil. Uh, and it's a song. You can find Pete Singer singing it on YouTube. Uh, In the gloom of mighty cities, midst the roar of whirling wheels, we are toiling on like chattel slaves of old, and our masters hope to keep us ever thus beneath their heels and to coin our very lifeblood into gold. But we have a glowing dream of how fair the world will seem when each man can live his life secure and free and there's joy and peace for all in the commonwealth of toil that is to be. Thank you very much.